Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with seven penny stocks under $5 each and what could be the best time to invest in these small cap stocks. You wouldn't think of it to look at the charts with penny stocks down big last year, but I'm about to show you why these seven stocks could produce triple digit returns this year. We're getting started with a company in one of the best growth industries, CareCloud Inc, ticker CCLD, with its shares well under $5 each. CareCloud is a new entrant into healthcare information technology with a full suite of cloud-based solutions including records, patient management, patient experience, and monitoring, as well as the ability to design customized solutions for its providers. The Healthcare Information Technology Space, or HIT, is expected to grow at a 13% annualized pace to 2030, according to Datum Insights, and CareCloud has booked 34% annual revenue growth since 2017. Even better though, the company grew recurring revenue fourfold last year to $8 million. That is repeatable revenue, all while cutting its customer acquisition costs in half. Like most IT companies, CareCloud is using an acquisition model to improve its software and services with some solid acquisitions over the last few years, including Meridian, a spinoff of GE Healthcare. But what is impressive here is that it's been able to do that without bloating the company with debt. CareCloud owes just $13.3 million in long-term debt against $9.3 million in balance sheet cash, so net debt of only $4 million, and this is a cash flow positive company. Management is guiding to $144 million in revenue this year for $26 million in earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. Shares here are trading for just 0.38 times sales, which is unheard of for a growth company in a growth industry. Next here, one of the smaller companies on the list, Galaxy Gaming Inc, ticker GLXZ, comes in at just a market cap of $70.8 million. Galaxy is the world's largest independent developer and distributor of casino table games and systems for traditional casinos, as well as online gaming. Of course, the pandemic lockdown hit sales for all gaming companies, but this one rebounded fast. Revenue was up 22% in the first nine months of last year versus a year earlier to just over $17.5 million. And besides that growth, what I'm really looking for in these small cap companies is the balance sheet health to survive any downturn and make it to the next bull market. For that, Galaxy Gaming increased its balance sheet cash to $19.2 million last year and decreased its long-term debt owed. The online gaming segment is where the growth is for this company, leading in table games licensed to the online gaming world. More than 1.2 billion wagers are placed on Galaxy iGames annually, delivering positive cash flow and growth. We've still got five more, the best penny stocks to highlight, but there are a lot of misconceptions about these high return investments, so I wanna show you exactly what defines a small cap stock and why right now is the best time to invest. Now, a lot of investors take that term penny stock literally and think these are just any stock trading under $1 a share. Actually, price has nothing to do with it. You know, small cap penny stocks are any company with a market value under $1 billion. It's in these smaller size companies that you're going to find that higher growth and the potential for 10x returns. As an example, we can look to the iShares Microcap ETF, ticker IWC, a fund of 1,750 companies from the 2,000 smallest companies trading in the U.S. market. Now, the median company size here is just $196 million. To put that into perspective, the median company size of those in the S&P 500 market index, those 500 largest US companies, is 160 times larger than what we find in this penny stock ETF. Now, that small cap universe of stocks is concentrated in five of the 11 stock sectors, with 80% of the smallest stocks in healthcare, financials, industrials, consumer discretionary, and technology stocks. And I know what you're thinking. Looking at that recent chart of the penny stock ETF, you'd think you'd have to be crazy to invest in these right now. The IWC fell 26% to the market low last October, underperforming the S&P 500 by 5%. And that underperformance by penny stocks is typical in a crash. Look at the 2008 Great Recession. Penny stocks plunged by 60% versus the 50% drop in the overall market. Nation, these smaller companies are gonna be hit harder by a recession and any market weakness because they don't have the billions in financial flexibility to survive. But that all turns around when stocks start climbing and the economy recovers. Penny stocks returned 181% in the five years post-2009 low, beating the S&P 500 by nearly 50%. And again, in the year following the pandemic low, 
penny stocks in the IWC nearly doubled the market return, up 151% versus a 79% return for large cap stocks. Folks, now is the time to invest in penny stocks after that crash and when there's still enough fear in the markets that is keeping these prices low. One of the lowest price stocks on our list, Tango Inc, ticker TMNA, trades for just 45 cents a share. Tango is an African fintech connecting rural farmers across its social network. The company first leases its mobile devices embedded with the social platform on it and enables financial services with it. It's like PayPal, Samsung, and Facebook all had a baby. The company has leased and sold over 30 million devices and has 9 million subscribers to the platform. The Financial Solutions launched just last year and already sees more than 8 million transactions a day. Revenue here doubled from 2021 to $1.1 billion and the company turned net income positive to $31 million. It's got over $128 million in balance sheet cash, though also quite a bit of debt here at $716 million, so not without its risk, but this is an innovative, growing company. Now, this one does come with a warning, though. Tango is what's called a pink sheet stock, or trading on the OTC or over-the-counter market. Now, that's different from most stocks you're going to see that trade on the exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. You see, the bigger exchanges have stricter listing requirements for their companies, including audited financial statements and oversight. OTC stocks just don't have that, so you can't place quite as much trust in the financial statements. That's not to say that every company on the OTC is a scam, but there are more frequently here, so you have to do more research into these and only invest in those you have the highest confidence. The next penny stock is making a huge run this year, already up 88%. Liberty Trip Advisor Holdings, ticker LTRPA. Liberty is a giant media group with 80% ownership of Sirius XM, the Formula One group, and the Atlanta Braves, as well as TripAdvisor platform and interests in charter communications and Live Nation. What really stuck out to me on this one, besides a well-run mature organization, the fundamentals are just too good to ignore. Revenue was up 77% last year with net income turning positive after three years of losses. The business generated $400 million in free cash flow and has a net cash positive balance sheet. That's enough cash to totally cover all the long-term debt. I think the big upside here though is with that TripAdvisor platform. It's the world's largest travel platform and is expected to be back to 100% recovery this year. People are off lockdown and making up for that lost vacation time, so I'm picking up names in this theme, you know, especially those penny stocks that have sold off hard over the last few years. The valuation of just 0 0.07 times sales is a bargain basement, and this one should continue to grow long term. I'm going to reveal three more penny stocks next, but what's better than those triple digit potential returns on small cap stocks? Getting free stocks when you sign up to Weeble. Start an account on Weeble with the link below, and you'll get two free shares automatically. Then deposit any amount to start investing, and Weeble is going to give you up to 10 more free stocks. That's up to 12 free stocks worth three to $3,000 each just for using the link I'll leave below. Now, I use Weeble for the Stock Simulator, a paper portfolio that lets you follow your strategies and your stock picks before investing real money. You'll also see analyst research, stock price targets, and invest in multiple markets around the world. Even if you don't use the app though, use the link I'll leave in the description, sign up, and get your free stocks. I'm sneaking this next one onto the list, even though the rally this year has put it just over $5 a share. Stitch Fix Inc, ticker SFIX. You longtime citizens of the Bowtie Nation are gonna remember this one. I recommended Stitch Fix back in 2019, around $22 a share, just before the price rocketed up to $95 by 2021. The stock crashed with the rest of e-commerce last year, but now I'm taking another look. The company is an online fashion service that touches a lot of disruptive ideas beyond e-commerce, including data analytics and artificial intelligence. It's using data-driven algorithms and human intuition to help match people with their perfect look. Customers first create a profile that assesses their preferences and matches them with a stylist, then powers that retail services and delivers the products. This powerful use of AI in e-commerce means that even on a 21% drop in revenue reported in the first quarter, it was still able to make more on revenue per client basis because the more a customer uses the app, the more the experience improves. Now I am worried about that drop in revenue and the fact that the company is burning 15 million a year in negative cash flow, but Stitch Fix also has $204 million in balance sheet cash set aside against just $147 million in long-term debt. Sales growth is expected to turn positive this year, and the shares are trading for a rock-bottom price of just 0.28 times revenue. At that valuation, if the shares don't jump over the next year, I expect the company is going to get an acquisition offer from a larger retailer. 
You see, any traditional apparel retailer would kill to have that kind of data-driven platform and the AI used by Stitch Fix, and it might only be a matter of time. Now, this next penny stock is gonna be a controversial one. At $2.46 a share, Ammo Inc, ticker POWW. Ammo owns the world's largest online marketplace for firearms and accessories. It also manufactures ammunition and has a strong distribution network with a growing military segment. The company's innovative line of ammo, including patented streak technology, sets it up with an advantage in an otherwise commoditized industry and it's just finished up a new $24 million manufacturing plant last year that, that tripled its production space. Ammo has $29 million in balance sheet cash against just $15 million in debt, so again, a net cash positive company here. The company booked super normal growth last year, almost 300% sales growth, though that's gonna slow in 2023. Inflation is eating into profitability here with lower EBITDA earnings expected, but this is still one of the few profitable penny stocks you're gonna find. I expect the military segment to fuel growth going forward and set this one up to head higher. I'll reveal that last penny stock to watch next, but there is one very important difference you need to know between investing in penny stocks versus larger companies. Looking back on our list of 31 penny stocks, 15 of them are in the red, nearly half the stocks. In the winners, though, you got stocks like Ryerson Holdings up 841% and Ramico Resources up 207% that have helped the portfolio beat the market. Even with those losses of 85% or more on five of the stocks, we've still got an average return of 33% over the last two years. That's more than 10% better than the S&P 500. This is normal, and it's something you need to be ready for. In fact, in a study of startup investments similar to these small penny stock companies by Willamette University found that more than half lost money. That's the bar on the far left here. About 55% of the investments produced a return of less than the initial investment. But then here, look at the bars on the right. Those exit multiples of 5, 10, and more, and 30 times the investment. It's this 15%, maybe 1 or 2 out of 10 investments that produces the majority of returns for venture capital portfolios. And circled here, you see that overall portfolio return that even with all these dud investments, all it takes is a few big winners to get that 2.6 fold return, 160% return on your money. Folks, this was my world as a venture capital analyst. You are going to have those stocks that go nowhere, or even the ones that lose money. But the goal is to make enough of these moonshot investments, the Ryerson Holdings that produces 800% return that it supercharges your portfolio to those double digit returns. Now again, I say this just because it's something you need to be ready for if you're gonna be investing in these penny stocks. I see too many investors freak out when some of their stocks turn red and they sell their winners too early without giving them the real time to grow and it destroys their portfolio. That's why I always recommend holding your penny stocks for at least five years, no matter what. Give your winners that time to really take the portfolio higher and don't sell out of the losers before they have a chance to grow. Our next penny stock here, Invite Corporation, ticker NVTA, has crashed since the pandemic high of $50 a share, but there is a lot that could take this one higher over the next few years. Invite is leading in that genetic testing and screening area of the market, focusing initially on the oncology segment, but really expanding it through the genetic information testing to, to answer questions about health and all age groups, from pediatrics to fertility and diagnostics. Innovation has pushed the cost of multi-cancer and other gene screening down 95% from 2015 to just $1,500 today. And it's expected to fall another 80% to just $250 by 2025. Now that's important because that current $1,500 screening cost, the purple line here, is still only reimbursable for those 60 and older. As those costs lower though, you get that test down to where people much younger are being reimbursed and they're willing to pay for it. At a $1,000 test, we could open up multi-screening cancer to those as young as 40 years old. And that being able to test people at a younger age could potentially save more than 60,000 people a year in the US alone, and it means a massive increase in the market for screening and testing stocks. And it looks like that trend is starting to show through in Invite results. The company blew past its earnings expectations last quarter, not only growing revenue by nearly 17%, but also improving profitability. During the quarter, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network also updated its guidelines for colorectal cancer, removing some age group and cancer type restrictions 
that could open up that increase in testing. The company is estimating a $154 billion market opportunity across four segments is already one of the most advanced in genomic stocks for revenue. Revenue is expected to double over the next three years to $1 billion annually. This is all as the company improves its profitability as well and converts more of those sales into earnings. This is another one that has seen the valuation just destroyed over the last couple of years. Uh, shares now trade for a price of just 1.1 times sales versus what should be a three or four times for a growth stock like this. Don't forget to get your free shares of stock with the link to Weeble below or click on the video to the right to see my forever portfolio. The seven stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.